Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to a new episode of What the Dickens. So if you have been around here on this channel for a while you may remember that back in February I did two weeks of Charles Dickens. I did a fortnight of talking about Charles Dickens every day. A series called What the Dickens in which every day I took a different Dickens novel and I discussed what the book was about, things I loved about it and things I didn't love as much. Now at the time when I made that series I had read every Dickens book two or more times, with the exception of Oliver Twist and David Copperfield. I reread Oliver Twist back in July, I think, but most of my opinions didn't change. Some of my comments about the plot were not as accurate as I thought, but all of my opinions basically stayed the same. Oliver Twist is still my least favourite Dickens book. But I have recently finished rereading slash listening to on audiobook David Copperfield, and I feel like I need to make a new video on David Copperfield because so many of my opinions have changed or been updated or been refreshed and I had forgotten when I made What the Dickens just what an incredibly brilliant, beautiful, wonderful book David Copperfield is. So I thought I would do a new What the Dickens for David Copperfield and tell you about all the reasons why this book is incredible and why I heartily recommend it. And I have so much to say about this book because it's great. So yes, let's let's begin. Chapter 1. I am born. Whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life, or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. To begin my life with the beginning of my life, I recall that I was born, as I have been informed and believe, on a Friday at 12 o'clock at night. It has been remarked that the clock began to strike and I began to cry simultaneously. I first read David Copperfield when I was probably about 14 or 15 and I remembered I really enjoyed it but over the years I had forgotten about it mostly. I think when I made What the Dickens last time this I had down as my eighth favourite Dickens novel. It's now, after having reread it, definitely my fifth. I prefer it to Great Expectations and I think there is so much to love in this book. So many wonderful characters, such an incredible plot. And I think it's a great starting place with Dickens as well because it's in the first person and you get to see so many common Dickensian themes and so many important Victorian themes but all through the lens and the journey of this one man's life. It's also a perfect mix of incredibly funny and at times very very sad and David is quite an interesting and engaging character. I don't always love him but I don't find him as irritating as I do Pip from Great Expectations and in that way he's a much easier character to read about and to follow along his story. Normally I find it really hard to explain what Dickens novels are about but David Copperfield is a little bit more easy to explain. It is about the life of David Copperfield. David Copperfield is born at the beginning of the book. He explains his childhood, the life with his mother, what happens when his mother ends up remarrying and goes on into his life. He begins life in a middle class situation but ends up for various reasons becoming very poor and then trying to work his way up again and the book is basically a story about him growing up and also his progression through classes and his success almost as a middle class professional man. For me this is a book that is really about middle class respectability and I know I go on about respectability a lot but it's really fascinating and important in this book because what this book emphasises a lot is the virtue and merit of good honest hard work, of having a profession but working really hard at it, of being kind of economical with your money and being good and kind to people, being right and upstanding but also working really hard and in that way the book is really interesting in terms of thinking about masculinity as well because David Cobb feels masculinity is a very emotional masculinity but it's also a very hard working masculinity as well. A very middle class respectable version of masculinity. The book begins when David Copperfield is a child and the main body of the plot runs until he is about 25 I think or in his late 20s. And in that way the book is really one about growing up. It's about David's journey from being a child to being an adult, how his views change, how his opinions are developed, how his feelings mature and how he discovers his kind of calling in life and what he wants to do with his life, how he discovers the way in which he wants to lead his life. It's also about all of the people he meets along the way. And because the book spans a long period of his life there are a lot of people who he meets in childhood and then rediscovers in adulthood, a lot of friends and characters and surrogate family members that he meets over the course of his life that play a really important role in his development as a person and in what he comes to value. Now David Copperfield was actually Charles Dickens's favourite of his own novels. In fact Charles Dickens once said, it will be easily believed that I am a fond parent of every child of my fancy and that no one can ever love that family as dearly as I love them. But like many fond parents I have in my heart of hearts a favourite child and his name is David Copperfield. So David Copperfield was Dickens's favourite novel of his own and it's often considered to be quite autobiographical. For example there are passages of David Copperfield's childhood which resemble passages of Charles Dickens's especially in terms of being born into a kind of educated middle class family and then suddenly becoming quite poor and having to go and work in a factory. There's also something which I'm not sure how much this has been written on but I do feel that the character of Dora is to an extent connected with Charles Dickens's wife Catherine. I'm not in general someone that likes to 
pour authors' biographies into their books and read tons of like life facts about them from it. But I do think from what I know about the way that Dickens had spoken about his wife Catherine after they separated and some of the complaints that he levelled at her, as it were, are quite similar to the way he talks about Dora. It was something that occurred to me reading it this time that I hadn't thought of before. David Copperfield also later on in the book becomes a writer which obviously ties into Dickens quite a lot. I don't in general feel that Dickens is one of those authors that puts a lot of his life into his works. He puts a lot of his opinions and social criticism into his work, but not in general a lot of his life. David Copperfield is generally considered to be the exception and to be considered at least partially autobiographical or at least influenced by events in Dickens's own life. Now as had been the custom in my previous What the Dickens video I'm going to start off by talking about the things that I love about David Copperfield and there are many, there are many. I love that you follow this one character through a lot of his life. One of the things I tend to love about Dickens is all of his interweaving plots and all of the different characters you follow but actually in David Copperfield I think it works really really well and the fact that you do meet so many characters and you do have so many different subplots which cross over into David's life does mean that it's still a really engaging read. You still have a huge cast but you also get to follow David as he grows up and you get to see his progression as a character and he does change quite a lot over time in a very interesting way. The difference in his character as a child and then as a very young man and as a slightly older man is just so significant and you do get to see his personality develop a lot. And Dickens has quite a few chapters where he talks about David's growing up over a long period of time and it's all in the present tense and often called like a retrospect and we zoom through things quite quickly with various images kind of pushed at us and I think they're really effective and really beautifully written. The chapters that are in the present tense in David Copperfield that the do these really interesting things are done so well and are really really effective and I love Dickens's clever impressive writing here because to write a book in which someone grows up that much over that long period of time is quite tricky but he does it very very well he doesn't just skip passages of time out and just skip like several years in the future he kind of does a little summary of the years that have passed in between which is done in a very clever beautiful way in which he picks out the moments of these years even if not like everything within them. I also love that David Copperfield as a child really feels like a child. One of the things I've mentioned before about why Oliver Twist is my least favourite Dickens is that I just don't feel Oliver Twist feels like a child. He just like cries more than adults do and that's about it. Um, that's a story for another day. I'll link my Oliver Twist video down below. But David Copperfield as a child for me really feels like a child and I think they do his character very very effectively. I also love David's interest as a child in stories and his desire to lose himself in books which influences the fact that David goes on to become a writer later in the book and the fact that although writing and books and stories isn't it's not exactly integral to David Copperfield it doesn't seep into everything but the fact that it is there in the background, this love of books and of stories, the fact that David Copperfield makes up stories about people he walks past in the street and that kind of thing is just really lovely and a nice like new added detail within the book that I really enjoy reading about. I also love the cast of characters. I think there are a vast quantity of incredible, incredible characters in David Copperfield, some of the most memorable and beautiful characters in all of Dickens. I think that Tommy Traddles is probably my favourite male character in all of Dickens. He's probably tied with Jenny Wren as my favourite character in all of Dickens. Tommy Traddles is a good friend of David Copperfield and it's, it's funny because I remembered from my first reading of David Copperfield that Tommy Traddles had been my favourite character but I couldn't remember anything about him or why but he's just a charming, wonderful, lovable, lovable character. He is so thoroughly good but also at times not that effective but always works hard and strives for things. He has hair that always sticks on end and will never lay flat in a very caricatured but lovable way. He's very entertaining. As a schoolboy he draws skeletons everywhere when he's afraid and scared because he's a slightly nervous child but he also wants to stand up for what is right and I think Tommy Traddles is just such a brilliant character. I find him more endearing than David Copperfield but I think that's almost the point and as a friend for David he does compliment him quite well because David Copperfield often views Traddles as a kind of failure but actually many of the mistakes that David makes in his life Traddles does not make and Traddles is actually much more consistent and correct and right and knows himself better than David knows himself. And Traddles kind of modesty and assessment of his own situation and opinions is often really sad. He often feels that he's not very good at things but actually he is such a wonderful character and he his role in the kind of dramatic climax of the book is so good and I'm so glad that he's involved in that. And actually like it's interesting that at the beginning of the book in, in David Copperfield's a very opening paragraph David Copperfield poses the question whether or not he will be the hero of his own life. In the dramatic climax of the book the villain as it were believes that what is going on is all of David Copperfield's doing and blames David Copperfield for his kind of downfall 
but actually it's not David Copperfield who organises this, it's Traddles, and I would argue that Traddles is, for me, the real hero of David Copperfield, and he is the person that does all the heroic actions in the end of the book, and actually he, he is kind of rewarded as well. I've spoken before about these kind of male angel figures within Dickens, such as Tom Pinch in Martin Chuzzlewit, but often Dickens's male angels are not rewarded with, like, a romantic plotline. They're kind of angelic and good, but they must, therefore, because they are so good, be, like, ugly and doomed to a life alone. Traddles has a love interest in the book, and it's quite significant that he can be so good and so important but also have a love interest because it moves him from being just a male angel to also being a hero, more so perhaps than David Copperfield. But I think Traddles is just a wonderful character and I, I love him a great deal, so yes, anyway. Other characters who are brilliant in David Copperfield. It is important to spend a moment pondering on the great character of Betsy Trotwood. Betsy Trotwood is David's aunt. She is, at first in the book appears quite a sinister, imposing figure, but David grows to know her much better later on in life and we discover a lot more about her and a lot more many complex things about her character. She's not quite the dragon she seems to be when she first appears but in fact has a lot of kindness and tenderness in her as well and has had quite a hard life. And she's a fascinating, fascinating character especially in terms of looking at Dickens and gender because she is such a strong, imposing and often terrifying woman. The fact that she acts both as a surrogate mother and a surrogate father to David Copperfield but also as a friend and confidant as well is very, very important. Mercy Trotwood is also just thoroughly awesome and hilarious. The first time we encounter Betsy Trotwood she is expressing her great fury that David Copperfield has been born as a boy rather than a girl because she doesn't she doesn't like boys, she doesn't like men, she only wanted a, a niece and the fact that she has a nephew is greatly distressing to her. And then later on in the book we discover her great anger at donkeys. Whenever donkeys come across the path outside of her cottage she sends her servant out or goes out herself to beat away the donkeys until they leave and she's just quite an eccentric character and I love that she is both very strong and very eccentric and very odd but also very like nice and understanding and kind as well and she's such a complex and interesting character and especially good if you're looking at kind of interesting female characters in Dickens. There's also Peggotty, another fascinating character who is David Copperfield's nurse when he is a boy and another surrogate mother figure for him. Her utter goodness and lovable nature is very very important to the book and also important in terms of the way that David Copperfield as a novel looks at class because Peggotty introduces David Copperfield to her family and he comes to know them quite well and she, being his nurse and the family servant, is obviously from a lower class background to him and introduces David Copperfield to the rest of her family, all of whom are from a working class background. David Copperfield as a child and even as an adult doesn't really feel the difference and the distinction between him and these people. One of his friends, Steerforth, who is from a slightly higher class background than David, really does and barely considers these people human at all. So the way that class is explored in David Copperfield is really, really interesting because the complete snobbery of James Steerforth and Mrs Steerforth, his mother, and also of Rosa Dartle is very, very 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 interesting and very very complicatedly and horribly at times done. And James Steerforth is another interesting character within David Copperfield. The influence he has over David Copperfield as a child and then later as an adult is very interesting and you can really see how it develops. The fondness David always expresses towards Steerforth even when he realises that Steerforth might not be quite what he always thought Steerforth was is very very interesting. And there are so many other wonderful characters in David Copperfield, from the eccentric Micawber who is always constantly in debt and always waiting for something to turn up and really hoping it does, and of course it doesn't really ever happen. There's also the humble but ever creepy Uriah Heep. There are the wonderful Peggotty's Ham Peggotty and Mrs Gummidge and this family who, like so many of the successful families in Dickens, are not a nuclear family at all. When David Copperfield first goes to visit Peggotty's family, he meets Mr Peggotty and assumes that Ham and Emily are both Mr Peggotty's children and that Mrs Gummidge is his wife. But no, Mrs Gummidge is the widow of an old friend of his, Emily is his niece and Ham is his, his nephew and they create this family that from the outside you think is a nuclear family and then you realise it's not, it's something much more complicated than that. I love the way that David Copperfield explores family. David Copperfield himself goes through a lot of different surrogate parent and sibling figures and the way that this is done is very very interesting and comments a lot on family within the Victorian period. I mentioned this before but Dickens actually has very very few nuclear families within his work. For a writer that was often praised and lauded as an advocate of domesticity, yes all his books end in marriage but there are very few happy marriages within his books and most of the happy families and the functional families within Dickens are not parents and their children, they are surrogate parental figures and like 
families that are, are meshed together basically in a, in a lovely way because it's really Dickens exploring the fact that family is much more than blood. So family is a very important theme in David Copperfield and another theme that I've already touched upon is respectability and kind of honesty and truth and goodness which is so important throughout the book this idea of being honest and good and the idea of the corrupting influence often of of the world and of various people within the world. But it's also a lot about perspective. David Copperfield spends quite a lot of the book being quite naive and his opinion of various people is kind of changed and shifted over the book. Yes sometimes his instincts are right but there are a lot of people like Jane Steerforth or like Annie Strong who he misjudges in various different ways and it's only later on in the book that he comes to realise their characters are not precisely what he thought they were. Gender is also very important to this book as well. I've already spoken about the ideas of masculinity which are so important in David Copperfield's kind of growing up and becoming a man. It's basically a book about becoming a man and the way that hard work builds into David Copperfield's identity as a man. But also there is a lot about the role of women that is sometimes done really interestingly and sometimes done slightly less well. Like I said, I think that Betsy Trotwood and Peggotty are two absolutely fascinating female characters in the Victorian period. I think McCor Mrs Micawber as well, for all her eccentricity and fainting, is much more complicated than often she immediately appears on the surface level. I also think the way that Little Emily is, dis is explored and examined is done quite interestingly and that Dickens does quite important things in that plotline. However, moving on to things I like less about David Copperfield. It's not that I like it less exactly, but I feel uncomfortable with David Copperfield's love life and it's the only thing in David Copperfield that stops it from being utterly utterly brilliant like as I've been listening to the audiobook which by the way is narrated by Richard Armitage and I strongly recommend it's very good for the first like half two-thirds of the book I was thinking that it would probably beat Bleak House in my Dickens estimation that it might become my fourth favourite Dickens but it isn't. I've put it as my fifth favourite Dickens because I like it more than Great Expectations but I don't like it more than Bleak House and there was one thing one aspect which mostly occurs in like the last third of the book which makes me uncomfortable and I remembered that it did before and I remembered to be on the lookout for this because I knew that I wanted to look at gender and the presentation of women within David Copperfield especially in the presentation of and comparison between Dora and Agnes and it doesn't spoil the book for me because for me the book is about all the people that David Copperfield meets more than it is about David Copperfield and so the fact that I don't feel like the fact that I'm not in love with his love stories is kind of okay but I do find the presentation of Dora and Agnes and the comparison between them problematic but also really really fascinating as someone that's interested in Dickens and gender is really interesting. Now Dickens within his work tends to have two different kinds of heroines. In his early work most of the heroines he has tend to be beautiful and good and that's about the substance of their character. In his later books his heroines tend to be good, yes, sometimes beautiful but it becomes less important, but also useful, intelligent, good at housekeeping, good at helping other people, really effective and efficient in life. They're not just good pretty objects who sit and look pretty, they actually do things and are really useful and effective and they don't necessarily need the help of men as much as the female characters in his early books. And David Copperfield for me always presents like a literal turning point between his his early novels and his later novels because Dora represents the archetypal heroine of his early novels. She is beautiful, she is good, she is nice, she is sweet but she is also a bit pathetic, she also is not very good at housekeeping, she uses a cookery book as a um, jumping stand for her dog. When David tries to teach her how to do housekeeping she just breaks down and cries. She is very sweet and very silly but she is very very childish. She refers to herself as a child a lot and also gets other people to treat her like a child and even asks other people to refer to her as a child. There's this point where David mentions that various people around Dora seem to treat her as a child and because everybody treats Dora as a child even though she's like an 18 year old woman he ends up falling into the same trap as well and he doesn't mean to and he doesn't want to but he almost can't help it and in this way Dora represents Dickens's early heroines which are often kind of infantilized and also represents this this problematic presentation of a certain kind of woman within Victorian literature and Victorian culture where women are infantilized and that is one obviously very problematic aspect of women within Victorian culture. Agnes is very different. Agnes is much more like the later Dickensian heroine. She is very very useful, she is very very moral and more moral than Dora. Like, 
Dora is moral, but not in a kind of actively moral way, more in a kind of passively moral way. She would never do anything she thought would be wrong, but nor would she necessarily know exactly what she thought was right. Agnes is like a pinnacle, a beacon of morality. She is also very, very good, very, very useful. She is a housekeeper. She is good with accounts. She is her father's housekeeper from a young age and carries the keys around with her, a symbol from the first time we see her of usefulness. She says that her great ambition in life is to be happy and useful, and she is David's confidant and advisor who tries to make everything in his life easier, who tries to make everything in everyone's life easier and to be of use to as many people as she can. She's also very intelligent, both on like a intellectual level, but also on an emotional level and she is often much more aware of David's emotions than David is himself. She is beautiful but whenever Agnes is described as being beautiful it always comes along with being described as being good. There is this idea almost that her beauty comes from her inner morality shining out through. It's her soul that makes her beautiful not her face. And in this way Agnes is much more similar to the later heroines of Dickensian novels and represents another problematic aspect of the presentation of women within Victorian literature and culture and that is the angelization of women. I don't think that's exactly a word, but here we have two very problematic presentations of women within the Victorian period. Dora representing woman as child and Agnes representing woman as angel. And I do find it problematic. And sometimes I feel like Dickens is doing something interesting with the way that women are perceived. And by putting these two characters together and almost comparing them, he is exploring two of, of the issues of the day. And there are points when I do think Dickens is criticising society for producing women like Dora almost, for educating women of a certain class to be showy and to be good at, you know, singing and painting but actually not have any useful skills. And there is a genuine social criticism and complaint against society for treating women like children so that they become like children as Dora is. And I do think that although the presentation of Dora is problematic and at times feels quite harsh and her dismissal at times and the way she is presented as being so stupid almost is really sad and really hard and I do find it problematic to read but I do think that beneath that Dickens has some genuine criticism of the Victorian social conventions or the Victorian social ideas that creates characters such as Dora and that makes people, makes women into people like Dora. Agnes though, I don't think there is any criticalness under there. Like I think Dickens is really presenting Agnes as the perfect woman. David Copperfield frequently refers to Agnes as his angel or his good angel or his better angel. This idea that Agnes is the moral force who can guide him through his life. And that is problematic as well and I do find it unsettling and I find the way that David talks about both Dora and Agnes, the way the book progresses and deals with both of these characters slightly unsettling. It's for that reason that David Copperfield isn't my fourth favourite Dickens novel. Like it's not really unsettling, I still love the book and I do find certain aspects of that slightly unsettling and slightly uncomfortable. They don't sit as well with me as the rest of the book. I'm very interested to know other people who've read David Copperfield if you feel like this at all and how you feel about Dora and Agnes. The presentation of these two women and also like the love arc that David Copperfield goes through over the book, it makes me slightly uncomfortable. I love all of the other plots and I think there are so many wonderful parts in this, so many wonderful wonderful characters. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant Dickens novel, a wonderful place to start with Dickens, a wonderful place to continue with Dickens. I think everybody should read it and it's just just a thoroughly enjoyable book as well and the humour is so good and so many parts are so like emotionally intelligent and so moving and wonderful but I do find that slightly unsettling and that's why it doesn't quite beat Bleak House, partly because of the gender stuff but also because of the presentation of Dora and Agnes. I don't find the like love story in David Copperfield as satisfying as I find the love stories in various other Dickens books. For me in David Copperfield what I love is not the love stories and not David Copperfield himself but it's all of the things around it, all of the other plots going on, all of the other wonderful wonderful characters that occur, all of the wonderful themes that are explored and the fact that it's just such a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable book. So there we go, I love David Copperfield very much, it is now officially my fifth favourite Dickens novel. I hope you have enjoyed this updated What the Dickens video. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read David Copperfield or not and what you think of it and I'll be back very soon with another video.